Hi, this is our project on Segway motion control using inverted pendulum on cart model. My name is Devin Grace. My name is Katrina Cavins. And I'm Robin Williams. So first we start off with an inverted pendulum. The first uh, uh, picture, the lady on the Segway. And then the second picture is how a segue or inverted pendulum works. So say you have a pin and you uh, put it on the tip of your finger. In order to keep it balanced, you must uh, go in the opposite uh, direction of the stick to keep it balanced. So here are some examples of segways. Uh, obviously, we've all probably heard of or seen uh, mall cops. So just fun ways to have fun with a segway. All right. And these are some of the variables that we will be using in our free body diagram that is on the next page. All right, so here is our free body diagram. We have two masks. The pendulum has a, a mass, which is a little m, and the cart has its own mass, which is big m. And we also have uh, the P and N are the reaction forces from the pendulum and the cart. Our F is our input, which is uh, the force that is acting on the cart. Then from that diagram, we get uh, our first equation, m uh, times uh, x double dot uh, plus b times x dot plus n equals f. And then we get what n equals. We substitute that into the first equation, and we get our first, uh, our first equation that we will be using throughout the, the rest of this presentation. Uh, next is a picture of the the uh, uh, the forces that are acting on the pendulum, just simplified. And you take uh, the forces from the pendulum and the forces from the cart, and you add the two equations together, and you get our final equation in the, the purple box. Next. We have, uh, in order to uh, make our analysis and control design uh, work, we must linearize the two equations that were in the purple box on the previous slide. When uh, equations are linearized by, uh, about the vertical upward equilibrium position, theta equals pi. So let's uh, let phi represent a small angle from the vertical upward direction and assume that theta equals pi plus phi. And then you substitute that into uh, cosine theta, which will give you a uh, negative one, a uh, sine theta, which will give you negative phi, and the angular uh, velocity uh, uh, will give you zero. And we come out with these two equations. Next, after we have had those last two equations, we do some substituting and a little bit of math, and we come out with our final transfer function equation. So here we have the block diagram for the entire system of a segue. On the left here, we have the input, which is the desired angle at which we want the pendulum to sit. So for this sake, we'll just use one, which that input goes into a summer, which is connected to the feedback loop hooked up to the gyroscope. And when those add and subtract each other, we get the uh, percent error, or sorry, the error of the angle that goes into the PID controller, which turns that into a voltage to tell the motors to rotate a certain amount or put this much voltage so it moves the pendulum. Then that goes into our plant, our transfer equation, 
which then comes out and produces an angle. And that goes back into the unity feedback loop and gives us our error again so it can further correct itself. On the output, we have it hooked up to a scope so we can see where the pendulum sits after each step. Using the Ruth Hurwitz table, we, we can see that the system is stable based off the no negatives. Here in Simulink, we used the, uh, uh, the transfer function hooked up to a constant, then to a scope to see what reaction we get. Um, here and below the graph, we get this type of reaction. You can see it's, it begins to settle, and especially if you're given enough time, it will definitely settle as it's trending downwards towards the zero. Now, when we hook up a Unity feedback link, um, we get actually a much tighter oscillation and a quicker settling time. Although it is marginally smaller, um, comparing it to the last slide, we get a, uh, an extra oscillation, meaning that it has shrunk considerably. Now we use a PID controller to help further that process and, and, and help it settle quick, uh, quicker. Um, at the top, we have our proportional gain. Um, below that gain is the integral gain. And then below that one is our derivative gain. All of these numbers were found with MATLAB. So here is the graph for the, um, the previous um, Simulink file. Uh, as you can see here, the pendulum starts at a certain point, which it is saying 2.2. And when the transfer function starts to kick in, it swings it up. Um, we get about like a 20% overshoot. Then it slaps back and starts and it settles down. And here we can see that it, it is perfectly holding the position. Now we could use a step function instead of the constant um, to show, to represent any movements that the cart has and show that the function can actually uh, keep it stable no matter the um, input is put, that is put into it. So once we had done that, we took it into a root locus to find a 10% overshoot for the, uh, the transfer function. And over here um, to the right on the root locus plot, the dot over here shows that at a ten, if we want a 10% overshoot, we need to have a gain of 7.33. On the left is our MATLAB code to find the poles and zeros. Uh, it's a simple function, just, it was just, uh, function for pole and function for zero. Uh, from our block diagram, we created both a open and closed loop transfer function. Uh, here is our closed loop function in MATLAB. We were able to uh, use this to find a step of function. Here is our open loop transfer function in MATLAB. And here is our step function for the closed loop transfer function. As you can see, it is an unstable curve. And here's the step function for the open loop transfer function in MATLAB. It is an un, un, underdamped step response. Thank you for listening.